What's your reaction to being expelled from the Conservative Party? Well, I'm very disappointed that um, the party have leaked this out. Um, as I understand it, um, confidentiality was required for me to be able to uh, a appeal against the uh, unwarranted expulsion from the Conservative Party. I think it's completely spurious. Uh, and I've issued a rebuttal document now to the public, which I sent to CCHQ some days ago. I couldn't even get them to uh, respond, despite repeated requests for them to confirm they'd received it. Nothing back from various emails at CCHQ. Um, I do recall that to, over the, uh, the so-called offensive tweet, I was suspended within, within an hour or so. I don't know how they respond to complaints when they never respond to, to my complaints. What have they said to you? As far as we're aware, you have been expelled from the Tory party. It says here, yeah, after comparing the coronavirus vaccines with the Holocaust, what have they said to you specifically about why you're no longer in the Tories? Well, that's, that, 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 that's incorrect. The, uh, the tweeting question, I was retweeting a world-leading cardiologist and the, a paper from the... Uh, from a criminology uh, doctorate of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Um, and the, the, the quote I retweeted from the cardiologist was that the uh, vaccine rollout was the biggest crime against humanity since the Holocaust. That is neither right. denying the Holocaust or, or, or belittling the Holocaust, it's using the Holocaust as a moment in time uh, and saying that, uh, that, um, that uh, the rollout of the vaccines is the biggest crime against humanity since the Holocaust. Um, I've got to ask you, is that a flawed and potentially quite offensive comparison? Six million Jews, at least, amongst other groups as well, died during the Holocaust. No, I, th I think people, you'll, people you'll, would you'll, say you'll, people, you'll people find, have said, there's a, they, a lot more people it's, than it's an that will be injured. Comparison. Go on. Well, um, 25 of the world's leading Jewish doctors and scientists wrote a letter to number 10 on the 30th of December. It was, it was not initiated by me, but I was sent a copy of it. Number 10, uh, they, they accused the Prime Minister of falsely accusing me of uh, anti-Semitism, uh, which obviously diminishes anti-Semitism. And they also accused the Prime Minister of seeking to shut down my uh, right to free speech in the House of Commons, which they regarded as a sign of a totalitarian regime, which they find deeply worrying. Now, when challenge number 10 said initially they hadn't received that letter, it was then subsequently sent recorded delivery and arrived on the 10th of February. That letter's remained uh, unanswered by number 10. I also put that into my evidence pack, uh, originally um, rebutting uh, these allegations against me, and that was never mentioned in the, uh, in the dismissal letter. That They, they just conveniently ignored uh, 25 of the world's leading Jewish scientists and doctors who, uh, who defended me. Do you regret saying it now in the cold light of day, given that you've been expelled? It's, um, it's, it's deeply upsetting to be expelled from a party I've served uh, for, uh, for several decades uh, and campaigned hard for, but I, I barely recognise the Conservative Party at the moment. We seem to have moved away from being a party that legislates for the people to a party that legislates against the people. Um, surely I've got the right to free speech to express the genuine and legitimate concerns of my constituents about the safety and efficacy of experimental vaccines which were never tested properly. Uh, we know there's considerable vaccine harms. They're starting to emerge now. And, and Patrick, bef before I spoke out in December, and what urged me to do so was when the the government were looking at approving the experimental vaccines for children down to the age of six months to babies. Uh, as a result of those speeches I gave in Parliament, um, the government position has moved in a few months from wanting to vaccinate babies of six months, they, that never happened, um, then they moved the position to only over 50s and the immunocompromised uh, in January, for February the 12th. I gave another speech on the 17th of March pointing out how the boosters were, the, the lack of efficacy and the cost of them and the dangers of them. And then it's moved to over 75s, a completely different position that the government were adopting. And I put it to you, there was no one else speaking out. And if that's cost me my political career, then, then so be it, quite honestly, Patrick, because if I've saved the life or, or one child from being injured, um, that's worth it, isn't it?
Well, what would you say to people, Andrew, who would say that maybe you've overplayed the harms of the vaccines and that maybe you have overstated how experimental they were or how much potential damage that they could cause for people, that basically you've gone a bit OTT? Well, let's debate it then, Patrick. But every time I get to stand up to speak, the, the, the Chamber of the House of Commons uh, empties. Uh, they put up ministers who aren't even uh, qualified to uh, in, in the area of specialisation. The last two speeches I've given, we've had a minister who wasn't even the minister to respond to that question. Um, this is not open and, and free democracy. You know that there's a narrative out there, and if you go against the narrative that the vaccines are safe and effective, which they're not, um, you get closed down. I'm banned from the... From the 13th of December, yeah, when I, I stood up in the House of Commons and said that the vaccines oh, were needed to be oh, I've right, been basically cancelled from the mainstream media. Hmm. Um, I'm just going to look. I'm, I'm just going to come in and say you're perfectly entitled to your view. Of course you are, and, and that is that, that is that. At, at the same time, would you accept that the vaccines did save lives? Then would you accept that? I don't see the I don't see that the evidence is out there that would would support that the the risk from the vaccine that from the vaccine didn't outweigh the benefits uh, to all age groups in the data that I've presented to the House of Commons even the most vulnerable the over 70s uh, at the best case scenario they needed 800 boosters to keep one person out of hospital not acutely out of hospital whereas one in 800 is at least the uh, the average for a severe adverse reaction from the boosters themselves so there was no benefit even to the most vulnerable group in society and I explained all that to the chamber and the house on the 17th of March no one's been able to rebut those figures because they are scientifically uh, evidenced uh, uh, yeah I, I get what you're saying I, I mean I suppose and, and, the, and, the... and, and when, the, when when all this is investigated Patrick it's investigated independently um, I'm afraid, and I really wish I wasn't. Well, you know, uh, you look, you, you know, you look, you obviously. I wish I, wish, know I, wish that, I was wrong, but I'm not. Yeah, I mean, look, you obviously know, Andrew, don't you, that the World Health Organization and a lot of other scientists and doctors would come out and massively dispute what what you've said there. And so, I suppose I do kind of have to ask, well, who, well, why who, do you think you why do you think you're Patrick, right and they're it? not? Because all the people who uh, say that they're safe and effective are effe uh, on the science and medical side uh, have got a financial interest. You know, 86% of the funding of the Medicines and Healthcare Product Regulatory Agency um, is from Big Pharma. The uh, Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, the members of that committee who are supposed to look at the efficacy and safety of, of vaccines, they had to declare over a billion pounds of personal interest in Big Pharma. Uh, this is, these, our regulators are compromised, uh, uh, Patrick. Um, the people who are, who are pa giving is, me is the that, science is that, is that true? Is that, yeah, the versions, I mean, is, is they're, that they're, true? They're not, I mean, they haven't got a peculiar very... interest. And, and, and uh, those, are, those are the figures. Go and check them up for yourself. And who do you think funds the WHO? The biggest funder to the WHO is um, the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation and Gavi, both controlled by Bill Gates, who you might remember made an awful lot of money out of uh, mRNA vaccines. Look, it, yeah, it would, it, would, it would obviously, as I'm sure you can understand, Andrew, it goes without saying that many people would dispute the fact that they were compromised, etc. That's your view. They would have a different view. They would, they would dispute that. Why do you feel so passionately about this. This is, let's be honest with you, the, the hill you have chosen to die on. You could have had a perfectly comfortable gig, no doubt, in the House of Commons until the people of North West Leicester should decide that they've had enough of you. Why did you decide to, for want of a better phrase, die on this hill? Because this is about the safety and the health and well-being of children, and when the government... The, 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 certainly young people are at no risk of, of dying from, uh, from COVID-19, but there's a clear risk from the vaccine. It doesn't make scientific sense to expose people. You know, the first rule of medicine is do no harm. Um, Sajid Javid was advised by... There are a number of doctors who are Conservative MPs. I know that he was advised when he took over from Matt Hancock not to authorise the experimental vaccines uh, for anyone under 18. He listened to that advice, but he didn't take it, and he authorised them. That was a huge mistake, Patrick. Um, the harms that have been done are not rare. 
they're common. They're at least one in 800 and it could be down to one in 300, a severe adverse uh, event. Um, that's why we've got excess deaths. Another issue we can't debate in Parliament, no matter how many times I ask for it, you know, it's, it's, there's 1,000, 2,000 excess deaths a week in this country and Parliament does not want to debate it. I mean, this just isn't right. OK, now, look, look Andrew, again, look, I've, I've got to say, I imagine that a lot of the claims that you made there are disputed and the people involved will take a different view, etc. Uh, look, can, can I just ask a, a slightly broader question, which is... What, well, we why, haven't got why... excess deaths. OK, well, why, why, why do you feel as though... Why do you feel as though people aren't willing to stick their head above the parapet and say what you're saying if, as in your view, all of the evidence is there? What, why why well, do you think that is, that you're... The evidence is out? there, yes. Well, well, my degree was in biological sciences at Nottingham University a long time ago, and it was in biological sciences with a subsidiary in the first year in biochemistry, and I specialised in genetics and behaviour, and my final dissertation was on, on viruses and viroids. I, I, I probably have more qualifications than most in that place to, to, to look at the data. Patrick, in the, in the house behind us, we're, we're traditionally supposed to speak without fear or favour. What I will tell you is that is not true. There is a lot of fear and there's a lot of favour in that house. Uh, and, and that's not democratic. And I try to speak out for the people. And, well, if, if that's the end of my career, so be it. Well, all right, Andrew, look, thank you very, very much for your time today. Um, I, I've got... I've, I've just quickly, I mean, what, what, what is the plan going forward? Are, are you appealing this? Are you... Just planning on trying to, you know, what, rejoin the Conservative Party's time for election? I've I, I will be standing at the next uh, general election. Um, it's only leaked out today. I wasn't planning on this. We've released the documents that we've sent to CCHQ uh, as a rebuttal to their uh, their uh, expulsion. It's completely spurious. Um, Patrick, I didn't even have the codes to the Twitter account. I've never had them in, in any time that I've, uh, I've been an MP. Um, they're not interested. The party aren't interested in that. Uh, quite honestly, it was a kangaroo court. And they got the decision they wanted. One more on that one. I'm getting a few emails in about this, which is that although for radically different issues, it must be said, Andrew, for radically different issues, uh, people like, for example, Dominic Raab going recently, people are concerned that there might be a little bit of a, a push against Brexiteers, in a sense. Would you stand by that? Is this... A lot of people, Andrew, look, I've got to be honest with you, a lot of people will massively disagree with what you're saying, including, and I know you will dispute this, no, but what, what, what I've, what I've noticed... the medical community, right? So I've got to say that. That said, though, is there any sense from your perspective that this maybe isn't just about the things that you've said there? Is this maybe a slightly bigger picture that you're not necessarily the kind of person that the Conservative Party want in it as it moves forward? Is that, is that something you, you wonder about? I think anybody who cha challenges the official narrative on anything is, is now under pressure. That is not free speech and it's certainly not, not democracy. I would ask you to have a look at the list of MPs who voted against the government and, and voted against Plan B um, in Christmas 21, December 21. I was one of those. I've looked at that list of Conservative MPs who voted against the government about the masks, the mandates on the NHS and the, and the additional lockdowns, which were all proven to be unnecessary because of, Omicron, of the Omicron variant. Look how many of those are, have either been suspended or, uh, or uh, attacked by, by our own party. That's quite considerable. That's what it's all about. I spoke out a long time ago about these measures. The whole, the whole pandemic response uh, has led to a huge amount of problems, unnecessary damage to our economy, uh, to the well-being of young people and their mental health, um, and it's still going on. And until we admit we've made mistakes, the government's made mistakes, we're, we're not going to put anything right. And we certainly shouldn't be giving any more powers to the WHO to take over our laws and the administration of pandemics. They've got an appalling uh, track record. Uh, and we should, be, uh, we should be steering well clear of any of that. It's the absolute antithesis of Brexit, taking back control. Oh, Andrew, thank you very much for your time.